And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mary Wilson. And you're just too good to be true. And for her to sit there and tell us what had happened to her. Mary Wilson. A co-founding member of the Supremes has died age 76. In the luminescent tapestry of Motown's golden era, few threads shimmer as vividly as the legacy of the Supremes, a group that redefined the sound of an era and etched an indelible mark on the soul of music. At the heart of this iconic ensemble was Mary Wilson, a founding member whose voice and vision helped catapult the Supremes into the stratosphere of musical legend. Yet. Beneath the glittering surface of chart-topping hits and glamorous performances lay a tumultuous saga of ambition, rivalry, and unspoken tensions that would eventually lead to one of the most talked-about feuds in music history. Interestingly, the narrative of the Supremes is incomplete without delving into the complex relationship between Mary Wilson and Diana Ross, a bond that oscillated between sisterly camaraderie and bitter contention. The roots of their discord are tangled in the very fabric of their rise to stardom, where dreams and aspirations often collided with the harsh realities of fame. As the group ascended to unprecedented heights, the dynamics within shifted, casting shadows on friendships that once seemed unbreakable. Through their relationship, we were able to deceper that Mary Wilson's passing was more than what the public was told. But what happened to Mary Wilson? And why was Diana Ross in tears because of Wilson? Let us embark on a journey through the life and legacy of Mary Wilson. We delve into the layers of her story, from the triumphant highs to the tragic lows and the enduring mystery of her relationship with Diana Ross. The saga of the Supremes, one of Motown's most illustrious acts, is a tale woven with the threads of unparalleled success and the undercurrents of internal discord. At the inception of this legendary group, Mary Wilson, alongside Diana Ross and Florence Ballard, embarked on a journey that would forever alter the landscape of American music. However, the path to stardom was fraught with challenges that extended beyond the competitive music industry, seeping into the very core of their relationships. In the early days, the Supremes were a cohesive unit, bound by a shared dream of achieving musical greatness. Their ascent from the humble beginnings in Detroit to the pinnacle of global fame was marked by a series of hit singles that catapulted them into the spotlight. Yet, as their star rose, so did the stakes, and the dynamics within the group began to shift. The controversy that would come to define much of the Supreme's legacy was rooted in the growing prominence of Diana Ross within the group, a development that was both a testament to her talent and a source of contention. The decision by Motown's founder, Barry Gordy, to position Ross as the lead singer and the eventual face of the Supremes was met with mixed reactions. While it proved to be a commercially successful strategy, it also sowed the seeds of discord among the members. Mary Wilson, who had been an integral part of the group's formation and early success, found herself grappling with the changing dynamics. The shift in focus towards Ross was not just a professional adjustment, but also a personal challenge, as it tested the bonds of friendship and loyalty that had initially united them. The controversy was further fueled by the media and public speculation, which often painted a picture of rivalry and jealousy within the group. These narratives, whether grounded in truth or amplified by the press, added layers of complexity to the relationships between the members. The tension was not merely about the allocation of lead vocals or the spotlight. It was emblematic of a broader struggle for recognition, respect, and autonomy within an industry that often pitted talented artists against each other. Moreover, the transformation of the Supremes into Diana Ross and the Supremes in 1967 marked a significant turning point. This rebranding, while elevating Ross to greater heights of fame, also underscored the disparities within the group. Mary Wilson, once a co-equal member of a triumphant trio, found her contributions overshadowed by the burgeoning solo career of Ross. This period was characterized by a palpable sense of alienation and loss, 
as the original vision of the Supremes was gradually eclipsed by the ambitions and strategies of the music business. As the Supremes' star ascended in the constellation of Motown legends, the dynamics within the group underwent a profound transformation, one that would sow the seeds of discord and controversy amidst their meteoric rise to fame. The period marked by their string of hit singles, such as Where Did Our Love Go and Stop in the Name of Love, was paradoxically both the zenith of their collective success and the genesis of a rift that would deepen with time. The crux of the controversy lay in the evolving relationship between Mary Wilson and Diana Ross, a relationship that was increasingly strained by the pressures of fame and the machinations of the music industry. As Diana Ross was positioned more prominently as the face and voice of the Supremes, the balance within the group began to tilt, leading to an environment ripe for conflict. This strategic focus on Ross was not merely a matter of branding, but a reflection of broader industry trends that favored individual stars over collective ensembles. The tension was exacerbated by the group's grueling schedule, which included recording sessions, tours, and public appearances, leaving little room for personal grievances to be addressed or resolved. The relentless pace of their success, while exhilarating, also magnified the fissures within the group as each member grappled with the demands of their burgeoning careers and the shifting dynamics of their relationships with one another. Moreover, the controversy was not confined to the internal dynamics of the Supremis but was also influenced by external factors, including the media's portrayal of the group and the fans' perceptions. The narrative of rivalry and jealousy was a compelling storyline that captured the public's imagination, further entrenching the idea of discord within the group. This public narrative, whether accurate or not, added an additional layer of complexity to the situation, as the members of the Supremes had to navigate not only their personal relationships, but also the perceptions and expectations of their audience. Interestingly, the controversies surrounding the Supremes were reflective of broader societal tensions of the 1960s, a time of significant cultural and social upheaval. The challenges faced by the group, from issues of representation and identity to the pressures of conforming to industry standards, mirrored the struggles of the era. The Supremes, in many ways, became a microcosm of the larger societal debates taking place, with their music and their story resonating with audiences who were navigating similar issues of change and conflict. The crescendo of the Supreme saga reached its peak amidst a backdrop of soaring fame and intensifying internal discord, particularly between Mary Wilson and Diana Ross. This chapter of their story is marked by incidents that not only highlighted the depth of their rift, but also became emblematic of the tumultuous relationship that had developed between them. One such incident, emblematic of their strained relations, occurred during the Motown 25th anniversary special, where the world witnessed the palpable tension between Ross and Wilson played out on a very public stage. This period in the Supremes' history is characterized by a series of confrontations and disagreements that were not just personal in nature, but were also influenced by the strategic decisions made by Motown's management. The decision to rename the group Diana Ross and the Supremes in 1967 was a turning point that crystallized the hierarchy within the group, placing Ross at the forefront and relegating Wilson and other members to the background. This rebranding was not merely symbolic, but had tangible implications for the group's dynamics, exacerbating the existing tensions and contributing to a sense of alienation among the members. The controversies that unfolded were not confined to the realm of professional rivalry, but were also deeply personal. Reports of disagreements over wardrobe choices, song selections, and performance styles were symptomatic of the broader power struggles within the group. These conflicts were not merely about artistic differences, but were reflective of a struggle for recognition, respect, and autonomy within a group that had once prided itself on its unity and cohesion. Moreover, the narrative of the feud between Wilson and Ross was further complicated by the involvement of external parties, including the media, fans, and other Motown artists. 
The public's fascination with the drama added fuel to the fire, with each incident being scrutinized and magnified, often taking on a life of its own. This external attention not only intensified the pressure on the group, but also shaped the legacy of their relationship, casting it within the archetypal framework of a tragic rivalry. The impact of these controversies on the group's music and legacy cannot be overstated. While the Supremes continued to produce hit records, the underlying tensions influenced the creative process and the group's cohesion. The emotional toll of these conflicts on Wilson, Ross, and other members of the group was significant, casting a shadow over their achievements and contributing to a sense of melancholy that would linger long after their heyday. The narrative of the Supremes, particularly the evolving dynamic between Mary Wilson and Diana Ross, reached a critical juncture as the group navigated the complexities of fame, personal ambition, and the shifting landscape of the music industry. The controversies that had simmered beneath the surface came to a head, manifesting in ways that would indelibly mark the group's legacy and the personal lives of its members. One of the most poignant aspects of this period was the palpable shift in the group's internal dynamics, as professional decisions increasingly became personal battlegrounds. The allocation of lead vocals, a contentious issue from the outset, became a symbol of the broader power struggles within the group. Mary Wilson, who had once shared the spotlight, found herself marginalized as Diana Ross's star ascended. This relegation was not merely a matter of professional hierarchy, but was deeply emblematic of the changing nature of their relationship and the erosion of their once shared vision. The controversies extended beyond the recording studio and the stage, permeating the very fabric of the Supreme's identity. Decisions about the group's direction, musical style, and public image became arenas of conflict, reflecting the divergent paths that Wilson and Ross were beginning to tread. The tension was further exacerbated by Motown's management, whose decisions often favored Ross's burgeoning solo career, further alienating Wilson and contributing to a sense of disillusionment and betrayal. The impact of these controversies on the group's music was profound. While the Supremes continued to enjoy commercial success, the underlying discord influenced the creative process, infusing their music with an undercurrent of tension that was palpable to fans and critics alike. The group's performances, once a showcase of their unity and harmony, became tinged with the strain of their personal conflicts, casting a shadow over their artistic achievements. Moreover, the fallout from these controversies had significant implications for the group's legacy. The narrative of rivalry and discord became as much a part of the Supreme story as their musical accomplishments, shaping public perceptions and influencing the historical record. The legacy of the Supremes, and particularly the relationship between Wilson and Ross, became a cautionary tale of the pitfalls of fame, the fragility of friendship in the face of ambition, and the complex interplay between personal and professional identities in the public eye. In the twilight years of the Supreme's storied journey, the narrative took a poignant turn as Mary Wilson sought to bridge the chasm that had widened between herself and Diana Ross. Wilson's efforts to mend fences with Ross were not merely attempts at personal reconciliation, but also a desire to heal a rift that had become part of the Supreme's legacy. These endeavors were underscored by a profound sense of urgency as the passage of time lent a pressing weight to the need for closure. The attempts at reconciliation were marked by moments of vulnerability and openness, as Wilson reached out to Ross in various ways, seeking to rekindle a connection that had once been the foundation of their shared dreams. However, the path to reconciliation was fraught with challenges, as decades of distance, differences, and the deep scars of past conflicts presented formidable barriers. The dynamics of their relationship, complicated by the layers of history and the public narratives that had taken root over the years, made the prospect of reconciliation a complex endeavor. The controversies that had once fueled their feud now cast long shadows, making the journey towards understanding and forgiveness a difficult one.
The emotional resonance of this period is heightened by the realization that Wilson's attempts at reconciliation were not fully realized before her untimely passing. This adds a layer of tragedy to the narrative, as the opportunity for a full resolution remained just beyond reach. The specter of what might have been haunts the legacy of the Supremes, leaving a poignant question mark at the end of a chapter that was never fully closed. Moreover, the attempts at reconciliation and the ultimate lack of resolution serve as a reflective mirror for the broader themes of change, loss, and the passage of time. The story of Wilson and Ross, in their later years, becomes a meditation on the complexities of human relationships, the enduring impact of history, and the ways in which we seek to make peace with the past. In the aftermath of Mary Wilson's untimely departure, the world turned its gaze towards Diana Ross, seeking her response to the loss of her former bandmate and one-time friend. Ross's public statements in the wake of Wilson's passing were not just mere condolences, but carried the weight of decades of history, unspoken words, and the complex tapestry of their shared experiences. Her comments were scrutinized for signs of reconciliation, regret, or acknowledgement of the tumultuous past that had long defined the narrative surrounding the Supremes. Ross's reaction to Wilson's death was poignant, reflecting a mix of personal loss and public acknowledgement of Wilson's significant contributions to music and culture. Her statements were carefully crafted, balancing the need to honor Wilson's legacy while navigating the undercurrents of their past conflicts. This delicate dance between personal sentiment and public persona underscored the enduring complexity of their relationship, even in its posthumous phase. The public's reception of Ross's comments was mixed, with some viewing her words as a heartfelt tribute to a former colleague and friend, while others interpreted them through the lens of the historical tensions between the two. This divergence in perception highlighted the challenges of public reconciliation and the ways in which personal relationships are often complicated by public narratives and expectations. Moreover, Ross's response to Wilson's passing served as a catalyst for a broader reflection on the legacy of the Supremes and the indelible mark they left on the music industry and popular culture. It prompted a re-evaluation of the narratives that had long defined the group, encouraging a more nuanced understanding of the complexities of their relationships, both personal and professional. The controversy surrounding Ross's comments and the public's reaction to them also shed light on the broader themes of legacy, memory, and the ways in which we seek to make sense of the past. The discourse that emerged in the wake of Wilson's death was not just about the personal dynamics between Ross and Wilson, but also about the collective memory of the Supremes and their place in history. The controversies that once embroiled their partnership, marked by moments of discord and rivalry, have now settled into a more reflective narrative, inviting a deeper understanding of their journey and its significance within the broader tapestry of cultural history. The legacy of Wilson, in particular, is multifaceted, embodying not only her contributions as a founding member of the Supremes, but also her role as a custodian of their history. Her efforts to document and share the group's story through memoirs and public appearances were acts of preservation, ensuring that the nuances of their experiences were not lost to time. These endeavors, while sometimes reigniting past controversies, also provided invaluable insights into the inner workings of one of music's most iconic groups, offering a more nuanced perspective on the dynamics that shaped their relationships and their music. The controversies that once defined Wilson and Ross's relationship have, over time, become part of a larger conversation about the nature of artistic collaboration, the pressures of fame, and the challenges of navigating personal relationships in the public eye. The narrative has shifted from one of rivalry to a more complex understanding of the forces that drove them apart and the moments that brought them together. This evolution reflects a broader cultural shift towards a more empathetic understanding of the human stories behind the music.
Moreover, the enduring fascination with the Supremes and the Wilson-Ross dynamic speaks to the universal themes of ambition, conflict, and reconciliation that resonate across generations. Their story, with all its highs and lows, continues to captivate audiences, serving as a mirror to the societal changes and cultural dialogues that have unfolded in the years since their heyday. The legacy of the Supremes, and particularly the narrative surrounding Wilson and Ross, is a poignant reminder of the power of music to transcend personal differences and connect individuals across the divides of time and experience. It is a legacy that celebrates the triumphs of their musical achievements while acknowledging the human complexities that underpinned their journey. As the curtain falls on the tumultuous and triumphant saga of the Supremes, the echoes of their legacy resonate with a profound complexity that transcends the realm of music. The narrative that unfolded between Mary Wilson and Diana Ross, marked by its controversies and reconciliations, serves as a poignant epilogue to the story of one of music's most iconic groups. This concluding reflection invites us to ponder the intricate dance between fame and friendship, the enduring impact of art, and the indelible marks left by unresolved conflicts. The controversies that once fueled the dynamic between Wilson and Ross have, in the aftermath of their most publicized chapters, evolved into a more nuanced discourse. These disputes, once the fodder for tabloid sensationalism, now invite a deeper examination of the pressures exerted by the music industry, the societal expectations placed upon artists, and the personal sacrifices made at the altar of success. The legacy of the Supremes, therefore, is not merely one of chart-topping hits and glamorous performances, but also a narrative rich with lessons about the human condition. In the broader context of cultural history, the story of the Supremes, with its highs and lows, serves as a microcosm of the challenges faced by artists in the public eye. The journey of Wilson and Ross, from the heights of fame to the valleys of personal strife, underscores the complex interplay between public personas and private realities. Their story is a testament to the resilience required to navigate the vicissitudes of fame, the quest for artistic identity, and the pursuit of personal fulfillment amidst the glare of the spotlight. Moreover, the unresolved aspects of their relationship, particularly in the wake of Wilson's passing, leave us with a reflective consideration of the opportunities for reconciliation that go unseized. The narrative of their controversies, while marked by moments of discord, also holds within it the potential for healing and understanding. It is a reminder that behind the veneer of celebrity, artists grapple with the same dilemmas of connection, forgiveness, and the search for meaning that define the human experience. In conclusion, the legacy of the Supremes, enriched by the controversies and complexities of Wilson and Ross's relationship, offers a compelling exploration of the interplay between fame and humanity. It is a narrative that continues to captivate and enlighten, reminding us of the enduring power of music to reflect the deepest truths of our shared human journey. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.